Welcome to Music Library Research Methods, Music Scores, Formats, Editions, and the History of Music Publishing. Almost all research on a musical topic requires the examination of musical scores. This video aims to clarify the differences found in various editions and the purposes for which they are created. An overview of the history of publishing of historical editions will also be addressed. Format indicates how the music is laid out on the page, while editions indicate how the musical content has been selected and edited. Music scores come in a variety of formats, which most musicians will encounter at some point during their career. Each has a different purpose and certain benefits and limitations. Knowing the terms used to differentiate between formats is especially useful because this language is used in the library catalog and music score databases. A full score displays the complete music of a composition with each part on a separate staff. Normally, this term applies to scores for ensembles such as orchestras, bands, or choirs. The piano reduction takes a work with a large number of parts, such as an opera or symphony, and reduces it to two staves, playable at the piano, plus a line for the soloist if applicable. Piano reductions are used frequently to allow the soloist to rehearse with an accompanist instead of a full orchestra. The separate parts from the original full score are combined on a minimum number of staves to provide the structure of the work, its melodies, and harmony. Cues are inserted to indicate points of entrance for soloists or instruments. Parts are separately issued music from a larger work, often for single voice or instrument. In the library, parts may be combined in a single container for shelving purposes. Similar to a piano reduction, the piano vocal score presents separate lines for vocal soloists and choral parts, but reduces the instrumental lines to be playable for the piano. You will find the term score and parts often in relation to chamber music, which is issued with a score for the conductor and individual parts for the performers. In the library, you will often find these on the shelf in a folder with a pocket for the parts. Study scores are also known as miniature scores or pocket scores. These are photographic reproductions of the full score in a reduced size for instrumental and vocal works. These scores are designed for studying or for use while listening to music. Knowledge of the various score formats will help when searching for scores in the library catalog, in score databases, or in online repositories such as IMSLP. The language used to describe score formats is used consistently across all these platforms and search tools. A comprehensive understanding of the various score editions found in a music library will help you to find the appropriate source for your research or performance. Almost all printed music goes through a series of editorial decisions, which can greatly affect the way the music appears on the page. In some cases, the editorial decisions are transparent, while in other cases, they are presented fully integrated into the final score. This section of the video will present definitions of a variety of score editions for researchers and performers. Historical editions are classified as any music publication that is devoted to a past repertory. There are various types of historical editions to be found in the library, including critical editions, complete editions, facsimile editions, and historical sets. Critical editions are also known as scholarly editions. They're prepared on the basis of a critical evaluation of all the known primary sources, which are then presented in the most authoritative and authentic version. Editorial material is clearly distinguishable from the original. Scholars who produce critical editions make a comparison and evaluation of the primary sources, manuscripts, copies, sketches, and publications supervised by the composer. They keep original comments and changes to a minimum and clearly distinguish between original markings and those added by the editor. Sometimes these editions will be accompanied by a critical commentary, which is published alongside the score. Facsimiles are photographic reproductions that replicate the original manuscript or printed source. They are used for study rather than performance. Sometimes, a facsimile edition of a sketch or a single page of a manuscript will be included at the beginning of a performing or critical edition, although they can also appear in a series. Complete sets of facsimile editions are classed in ML 96.5. Complete editions go by a number of different names in different languages, but are most commonly known as complete works, or collected editions. These are a critical edition of the complete works of an individual composer. 
They are classified under M3 in the library in large multi-volume sets that can take 20 to 30 years to complete. Historical sets are also known as monuments of music. They are similar to complete editions in that they are large multi-volume critical editions, but these include compositions by composers who are related by geography, time period, or genre. All historical sets are classified in the M2 section of the library. Musica Britannica is one example of a historical set. It was founded in 1951 as an authoritative national collection of British music, much of which is unpublished in any other edition. Recent researches in the music of the Baroque era began in 1964 and since then has been a constant source for new editions of early music. In many ways, this series has brought to light the music of composers who might have been otherwise neglected in the musical repertoire. English Lute Songs is an example of a historical set that focuses on pieces related to geography and instrument. The historical editions are contrasted with performing editions, otherwise known as practical editions. Designed to help the modern performer, performing editions include elements of performance practice such as fingerings, dynamic markings, ornamentation, and phrasing that has been written in by the editor. They may not indicate the source on which they are based and may not differentiate between editorial editions and original markings. Within the performance editions, there is a great variation in quality and price. In the 20th century, a number of publishers have combined scholarly work into the performing editions, creating ur-text editions, or by providing performance editions based on critical editions. Ur-text editions are known as critical performing editions, or scholarly performing editions. They are performance editions based on primary sources. Ur text means original source. These editions provide the composer's intentions without later editorial editions, and if there are editorial editions, they are clearly distinguishable through devices such as smaller font, asterisk, color, or footnote. Major publishers of these Ur text editions include Henley, Vienna Ur text, and Baronreiter. Until the second half of the 18th century, music publications focused primarily on new or nearly new works. When an older work was printed, it was usually one that had remained popular over time in the geographic area of the publisher. At this time, music scholars were gaining a new appreciation for the music of their past, which led to the first modern histories of music and to the first historical editions. Early writers of music histories also edited historical music collections. Editors began to search out original sources in order to produce authentic texts, and there was a new interest in producing uniform editions of the entire musical works of individual composers. While several complete works of major composers were begun during this era, the majority of these remained unfinished as complete sets. Most historical editions of this period were small anthologies containing vocal polyphony from the 16th century onwards. Instrumental anthologies also began to appear around the turn of the century. One example of this is Cartier's L'Art de Violon, which was published in 1797. A copy of this work can be found in the Education and Music Library. At this time, editorial criteria did not really exist. Each editor followed their own judgment, which often meant that the editor's musical knowledge would take more prominence than the integrity of the primary source. Editors were likely to accept a single source as the authority and didn't usually compare sources. Some of the aspects of early notation had not yet been discovered at this time, so these early historical editions are less useful today for their content, but more so as illustrations of the history of music scholarship. Around the mid-19th century, large collected editions began to be published, and completedness became the rule rather than the exception. Collected editions of single composers' works began to appear with more frequency from the 1850s through to World War II. In these publications, the criteria of modern editing began to be established. Notably, the first volume of Box Complete Works was published in 1851. Most of these series were published through to completion and many remain the standard editions of today's music scholars. Collected editions of other kinds also appeared during this time. 
These often included a general editor who would coordinate publication of individual volumes by various sub-editors. The repertory included in these historical sets is generally limited to the works of a specific geographic region. Many of these works were supported by government funding. Multi-volume anthologies also continued to appear for works from various time periods. There was an overall growth in music publishing activities during this time due to an increase in amateur music making from the growing middle class and a more affordable publishing process. Many music publishers, such as Breikhoff and Hartle, Ricordi and Shermer, began to create millions of inexpensive performance copies of popular works, including transcriptions of operas for voice and piano. There was a growing awareness at this time that the modern edition should mirror the composer's intentions, instead of being completely taken over by the editor's musical tastes. Editors increasingly began to indicate original notations. Musicians began to rely on new Urtext editions, which provided close readings of the original source. Editors began to include commentary in the prefaces, footnotes, or separately bound pamphlets. After the Second World War, there was an upsurge in the number of new music publications, music research, and a renewal of activity in many dormant series. Advances in reprographic techniques enabled scholars to consult a variety of widely distributed sources by way of microfilms and prints. Publishers were able to produce better copies of facsimile editions more economically and for wider distribution. There was a trend at this time to reassess many of the older complete work sets that had been published, and in some cases there were revisions made to existing editions. In other cases, materials that were previously omitted were published as supplementary series. There has been a critical re-examination of complete work sets and commencement of entirely new complete editions under the direction of international committees of scholars. Some examples of these are new complete works of Bach, Handel, Mozart, Beethoven, Chopin, Corelli, Rossini, and Vivaldi. Many of these new complete editions have broader coverage than previous editions and include materials such as composers' arrangements of other works, early versions, sketches, documentary or other pictorial biographies, and facsimiles. Other complete work sets have also been launched for composers whose works have not previously been published in this way, including the works of Telemann, Schoenberg, Hindemith, Grieg, Janicek, Algar, Berg, Debussy, and C.P. Bach. Three types of publication have appeared in great quantity since 1950, including editions that include editorial information for research and performance in relatively inexpensive performing editions, series devoted to music theory or translations, and low-cost facsimile editions. A bibliography of collected works and critical editions can be found in Grove Music Online within the Editions Historical Entry. In this video, we have reviewed the various score formats and editions available in the Music Library. An overview of the history of publishing historical editions has also been covered from before 1850 through to the current day. The next video in this series focuses on locating scores in the library and incomplete works editions.